This is KGW News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. Today, the Department of Justice says it's stepping in to investigate the Minneapolis Police Department. The probe will look for possible patterns of excessive force and discrimination that violate a person's civil or constitutional rights. If the Bureau is breaking the law, Attorney General Merrick Garland says he'll issue a public report. The DOJ says this is a civil investigation. It's separate from the pending criminal case into George Floyd's death. The former cop convicted of killing Floyd heard the verdict against him less than 24 hours ago. The jury found Derek Chauvin guilty of second and third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. Chauvin walked out of the courtroom in handcuffs. The judge revoked his bail and ordered him into police custody for the next eight weeks. So what happens now? Several factors will determine how long Chauvin spends behind bars. Here's Evan Kozloff with more on the sentencing phase of the trial. By now you've heard the charges against Officer Chauvin, and so all eyes will now be on sentencing. Here in the Verify team, we want to make sure that we have the facts. Our sources are a pair of Minnesota legal experts, Rachel Moran and Rachel Polos, both from the University of St. Thomas. First, here are the max sentences. 40 years for second degree murder, 25 years for third degree murder, and 10 years for second degree manslaughter. But our experts emphasize that these can't be stacked, meaning that the absolute max sentence is 40 years. But Minnesota law uses something called presumptive sentences, which sets a typical range of penalties for those with no prior convictions. In this case, between 10 and a half years and 15 years. And the only way to give a higher sentence than that is if there are so-called aggravating factors. The aggravating factors, a few of them are present in this case. One of them is whether children were present for the crime. Another is whether the defendant was in a position of authority and abused that authority. A third uh, relevant one is whether the victim was in a vulnerable position. Now we should note that Chauvin waived his right to have a jury look at those factors, so it's going to be up to the judge, Peter Cahill. Last important factor, our experts tell us that under Minnesota law, two thirds of a sentence is served in prison the rest under supervised release. The judge, of course, could impose a higher sentence than the guidelines suggest, but he can't change that two thirds rule. With your Verify, I'm Evan Kozlov. Here in Portland, people also reacted to the verdict. We caught up with folks in Northeast Portland there at Irving Park. Many of them watched the verdict come down and say they were relieved by what they saw. Uh, it feels good that uh, justice was served for George Floyd and his family. And I just feel like there's still more work to do, you know, Black Lives Matter. And uh, I just feel like, yeah, like I said, there's more work to do, you feel me? I thought good. I thought I'm, I'm glad and I feel like it was to be expected. It should be expected to receive those repercussions for murdering someone. The verdict comes almost a year after the murder of George Floyd. It was a year filled with protests, demands for police accountability and the end of systemic racism. It also brought riots and destruction. Many hope yesterday's verdict will mark a new beginning. Turning now to the pandemic, COVID risk levels for some counties here in Oregon will change again on Friday. Governor Kate Brown made that announcement yesterday afternoon. Washington and Yamhill counties are among those moving to high risk. As you can see from this map, most of Western Oregon is in the high risk category. 11 counties, including Clackamas and Marion, would have gone back to extreme risk, but the state changed the system. So that only happens now if we see a high number of hospitalizations statewide. Well, today FEMA opened its first mass vaccination site in Oregon. It's in Jackson County, but will serve Josephine and Klamath counties too. It'll offer an extra 1,000 doses a day in areas hit hard by last year's wildfires. The feds are providing these vaccines. They will not come from Oregon supply. The FEMA site will stay open for at least eight weeks. And starting Friday, the Oregon Health Authority says indoor full contact sports can start up again. This is in counties at low and moderate risk for COVID and venues can only be half full. For counties at high or extreme risk, K through 12 schools will need to draw up a plan to keep kids safe. Then they need to get that plan approved. 
We want to give you a peek outside on this Wednesday afternoon. Look at that. Nothing but deep, deep blue sky over Mount Hood right now. Sure is a beautiful day. Rod, at least one more day of sunshine, right? Yeah, and uh, starting to uh, notice some some uh, snowless spots there on the mountain with the, how long it's been dry. Timberline has melted some 40 inches of snow since this dry stretch began, by the way. All right, one more afternoon of perfectly clear skies, and we're now getting into it for inland areas. Here's our story column camera. We had the marine push this morning, which has hung around longer than 24 hours ago, just now starting to open up some clear skies up on the hill above the Astoria column. You can see the bridge out there, 53 degrees. Other areas of the coast are still cloudy, expected to get some sun this afternoon. And we saw this earlier uh, in the week. This is um, our uh, the live camera out at Aspen Lakes Golf Course. And looking uh, south, uh, you can see a wildfire there. That is a controlled burn according to the Deschutes National Forest. So if you are living over there and seeing that, just know they've been doing this for a couple weeks now, controlled burns in the Deschutes National Forest. Sunshine over downtown Portland, 65 is the current number. I think we could still squeeze out 12 more degrees. That'll give us a high of 77 this afternoon. Cool down tomorrow, rain this weekend. We'll talk about all of that shortly. We'll see you then. Thank you, Rod. Well, starting a business during this pandemic is a bold move, but more people are doing it like this guy, Eric Kepler. After spending years as a pastry chef and then winning ba Best Baker in America on Food Network, he started Stash Chocolate. Kepler set up shop out of his home in Hillsboro. He sells mostly online and says 2020 was better than expected. Customers that already liked what I was doing as a pastry chef and were willing to kind of um, go with me on this ride to become a chocolate maker. Um, so it, it went pretty well. Last month, 2,600 businesses registered in Oregon.